Hello, beautiful people. How are you? Happy Friday today. We started a little early because we want to keep you on your toes. And I'm a little, I'm really excited to see what Mark does with this, especially my 14 year old son. I told him we're going to be designing, redesigning the Razor logo. He got really excited. He's like, yeah, for real? I'm like, no, not for real. This is unofficial. But maybe somebody from Razor is paying attention. Uh, marketing director, we'd love to work with you. So let's get into it today. We're going to be talking about the logos that you love to hate. And we're going to be doing the redesign with none other than Mart Beeman. Is that how you say your last name? How do you say your last name? Beemans. Beemans. So you have to pronounce the S. Yeah. Months. I like that. Sucks. But it was a good try. It was a good try. <laughs> and <laughs> if you want to get in contact with Mart, here's how you get in touch with him on Instagram. He's Mart Beemans. And he's from the Netherlands. And apparently they're dealing with the pandemic pretty well, I think. Yeah, right? It's going all right. You guys are doing pretty good. I'm glad to hear that. Somebody's doing this right. And you can check out his work at martbibons.com and see the wonderful illustration work, which we don't ever talk about in the show, but he's a really good illustrator as well. Okay. So let's look at the logos. You know what, Jonah? This is screwing me up. I don't know what we're looking at. I don't get the preview screen anymore. Anyways, we're going to be tackling the rather famous or infamous logo, the, the three snakes coiled together for Razor, and we want to see what he's going to do with it. But I always have to ask our design professionals, why? Why design something for Razor? Take it over. Okay, so um, first of all, I don't hate that logo. Um, <laughs> just I think there's a couple of things that can be improved. Yes. Uh, for example, when you're looking at my screen, the... the I'm not sure if I'm sharing it at the moment, but um, when yeah, you we see don't know what we're looking at. I okay. kind of like topography. It's just mm -hmm. that uh, when you scale it down, the snakes become really hard to recognize. Yep. Um, also, because the outline is quite thin, mm -hmm. I think that could be a better connection between the symbol and topography. So, I mean, for the people that don't know, the Razer it's a, it's a gaming uh, industry brand. They design yep. uh, mouse, mice, uh, keyboards, gaming mats, stuff like that. And I actually like most of their branding. I think the, the way they do product photography, um, the way they use color, the way their website is designed is all pretty neat. I just think there could be some small tweaks on the logo that could improve and elevate it a bit more. So that's why I chose that logo. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit of background be, uh, behind the brand, um, why they chose the name Razor. It was really weird story. Some one of the co-founders had an accident with the Razor and then they uh, wanted to launch this company. And they accidentally misspelled the word when they filed uh, for the trademarks. So basically, since then, they were using the wrong uh, wrong spelling of razor, but they just stuck with it. And the symbol, um, I got this from one, one of the interviews they gave a, a while ago, I think a couple of years ago, uh, when they first started, is that uh, the, the logo looks like, or the mice, the, one of the first mice looks like that it, it had a Logitech mice for lunch. So that's why they use snake, snakes. Mm. And the first pro product was uh, called the Razor Boom Slang, and that's where the green color comes from because the Boom Slang is a green snake from Africa, I think. So that's like the small story behind that logo. Um, this was the logo, the first one they used. Oh, yeah. I think they used it until like 2008 or something like that, I'm not quite sure. And then they modified it a little bit, they updated the topography. I think that's where they kind of like missed the chance to do it all at once. But yeah, now maybe it's it's, it's it maybe they're like setting themselves up to, uh, to ease into another change, you know. But uh, I think the, the 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 symbol can still be improved. I quite like the topography, but I also changed the topography a little bit in the end. So this is for like what I like about the logo, the three-headed snake. I think that's something that's quite recognizable. Uh, the triangle shape is also quite dynamic. And because of the story about the razor, with the way they come up, came up with the name, I think it's maybe even has like a small connection with like the throwing stars or the the like the the, the, the weapons. Mm -hmm. Kind of has like a small like razor connection. And I kind of also like the the tilted angle on the logo. As you can see here, it's not like um, perfectly aligned to the vertical uh, angle, but it's slightly tilted, and I think it adds a nice dynamic to the logo. And I also like the topography, but I'm still going to change it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what I think can be improved is the snakes are way too complex, except, for example, in the middle, uh, it looks really messy, especially when it's scale it down. So in my version, I'm trying to keep the, the, 
tip of the snake, but I'm going to clean this middle part up a bit. And I'm also removing the outlines because I think it's better to have like one solid color instead of having the black and the green so that you can also use it on a white background, black background, green background. So it's, it becomes a bit more versatile. So these are some of the sketches I made and I'm now going to show a video of how I made these sketches and it will also show like how I got to my final uh, logo design. I mean, I'm reading a comment here is like people love to see your design process, Mart. Yeah, that's actually um, like, for example, um, I watched the episodes of Hadil and um, Marcus or Mark, mm -hmm. and they focus really on like the brand strategy and the brand identity and stuff like that. Because I, but I read like a lot of commands from most of the episodes that I was a part of, and people always command on like the, my sketching process. So that's why I chose to focus mainly on that. So the video of the sketching is actually a bit longer than normal. And my idea was to basically just show the video and if people have questions, how I do something, I can dive into Photoshop and maybe even do it live. So that was my idea for like this episode. I will just start the video and if you have questions or whatever, just let me know and I will I can pause it. Okay, sure. So this is what I always do if I have like a logo which I have to redesign and just make some quick notes of what I want to change so I don't forget anything or maybe if things will pop into my mind later, I'll just add them. So here I'm just redrawing the race logo for memory. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to um, find out what I would be able to remember, like just taking one glance at the logo and then redrawing it. And the left one is the one I redraw for memory. And the right one is the one I redraw after seeing it again. So you will immediately notice that the middle part is so complex, I wasn't even able to remember what it looked like. Mm -hmm. So in my sketches, that was one of the first things that I ditched and just decided to make the middle part more, uh, yeah, I guess, more simple and keep the identity of the, 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 the snakes on the outer part. So this is just me trying a ton of variations, how the snakes might be able to look, what the tail of the snake might look like, um, if they're going to be twirled into each other or cut off or just trying out variations, what it might look like. I like that part of your process is to take a look at the logo and then just turn it off and then redraw it yeah. to test your recall, the recallability, because complex logos, they're very hard to remember. And I, I think most designers who've seen this before know what I'm talking about, where they ask people to draw their favorite logos and they're pretty horrible representations mostly because they're, our memory is not as good as we think it is. Yeah. So I wanted to create something that was a bit easy to remember and also a bit easy for people to be able to draw themselves. Mm -hmm. Not so much because people really need to draw the logo, but it's when you're able to draw something yourself, even if you're not a designer or whatever, it means that you have like a good understanding of what the logo looks like. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a good test for uh, keeping it simple. Yeah. That's also why these sketches, like the first sketches that I'm making are just straight lines and very, very simple. Just I just want to get an idea of the balance between the thickness of the lines, the, the, um, the spacing between the, the curls of the snake, just trying out what works and what doesn't work. And eventually, I'm just going to pick someone or something that just looks balanced on the eye, you know? Are you drawing with a triangle template underneath this that I cannot see? Because how are you getting this all line up like that? No, I'm just drawing it freehand, but um, I know what the angles on the triangle are. So I'm drawing the first step uh, just by drawing it and then rotating it the same degrees every single time. So I think it's like 120 degrees to get like the perfect triangle. Mm -hmm. So last, this is like one third of the, the logo and then I'm rotating it the same steps every time. Dang, you make it look so easy, dude. I, I can't say I, I'm not gonna hide it. I can't I can't draw like this. This is like I, I think I can draw, but man, the way you do this, it just seems like so fluid and so easy for you. Ooh, there's something interesting going on here. Yeah, a lot of people are commenting like insane sketching process. They would love to see you stream uh, on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah, I've actually thought about um, doing a bit more of. YouTube videos or maybe stream or whatever myself because people always just see the finished product and they never really see what process goes into it. So I think that might be interesting to 
do it a bit more, maybe for myself as well, to show people like what actual the work is that goes into designing a logo, you know? Yeah. I love that idea, except for the fact that uh, you should just give us all your videos. We'll post them here. <laughs> that's also cool with me, man. You guys, you guys have a lot more engagement, a lot more followers, so that's good. That's, that's a fair deal to me. <laughs> we'll take whatever you got, man. So, did you uh, are, are you drawing the snake from memory? You're like you know the the size of the the head of the snake is a certain way, or did oh, you look at a bunch of photos? Memory, yeah. I, I didn't hear your answer. I'm sorry. Uh, this, this, is, this is just from memory. Memory, okay. I think we all have a sense of like, yeah, we know what a snake looks like. Yeah. But then when you go to draw it, sometimes they're like something is off, you know, like the shape of the head or the tongue or something like that. I mean, it's trial, man. This is also sped up a little, you know. So, um, I think the total process of sketching, which I took for this uh, for this uh, stream, was about uh, seven or eight hours, and it's sped up into fifteen or twenty minutes now. So that goes there's more time that goes into it than what you see right now it's not like um this is my usual speed you know yeah i mean if you do like this speed we would like, okay, okay, well, came over everybody just quit design right now <laughs> yeah so when you're sketching like this do you take a break do you go and watch something else or you, what do you what's it like in between the first moment that you make your first stroke and then when you're done uh, I think I have a total of like 15 recordings from OBS where I recorded my scheme where I was sketching. So I think most, um, how do you say it, sessions of sketching yes. were around one hour or maybe 40 minutes. I see. And I, I really like to work on like three or four projects at the same time. So when I'm out of ideas for one project, I just work on another one. And then all of a sudden, new ideas come into my head for the projects I was working on before. It's just... Um, letting go of a project for some time can really help to you know, get some fresh ideas and maybe just browse the internet a bit and watch some Netflix or watch a movie or go outside. It really helps me to clear my head and get some fresh ideas for the new sketches. Okay. There's a question that's coming in here and, they, and Xanthi wants to know what, what platform hardware software you're using. Obviously, you're using Photoshop. What are you running this on? Um, well... This is a gaming brand and I'm working on Windows because I like to play games every now and then. So um, Windows and I'm using a Wacom tablet to do my sketches. What's the brand of the uh, tablet, uh, the computer, the laptop? Uh, it's it's self, self-built, so it's... Oh, okay. Uh, it's not a laptop then, it's, it's, a, it's a PC? It's a desktop computer, yes. yes. Okay, I see. So you can tell okay, Mart's into this because he's building his own PC, you guys. Well, actually, a friend of mine built it, but oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I gave him a, I gave him a budget, and I told him this is what I want to be able to do with it, and then he selected the parts and the, the case and stuff like that, and he came to my home to build it. But this computer is already like six or seven years old, so I'm actually planning on, on buying a new one soon when the crisis is over. Mm -hmm. How much did you originally spend? What was the budget for this PC build? Uh, I think including the monitor and um, keyboard and mice, I think like 1,800 euros. Oh, that's not too bad. I thought you were going to drop a crazy number on us because gaming, uh, gaming machines can be expensive because of the video board. Yeah, but when you're used to Apple, then everything is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh. Be careful. <laughs> Very careful. Tread lightly, my friend. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was doable. And um, I'm using it both for my hobbies and also for my work. So it was worth the money. Yes, for sure. Anthony Sanchez, PC Master Race, a big smiley face there. Okay, uh, whatever. Whatever. So what I really like about when you build your own PC is when you need an upgrade, you can you don't need to like completely buy a new PC, but you can also um, invest on some new parts, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, now you're just being cruel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right. What's your favorite gaming PC like um, hardware company, like a uh, manufacturer? It's hard to say because it depends on what you need to buy. For example, if you want a video card, then it's going to be different than what you, the brand that you're using for your mice or whatever. So I think most gaming PCs have like six or seven brands inside the case. But like off the shelf, is there one brand in particular you prefer? You, what are the big gaming brands? Uh, I like that, Razer. I like, the, I like Razer, for example. Uh -huh. They make laptops too? I think they do. Not quite sure. I think we do. Okay, we should find out. I know there's gamers in here. What are the big gaming brands? Because we should just mention it in case they're watching, and then 
magically maybe a PC will appear. <laughs> Mart, I'm trying to help you here, but you're not helping me. Okay, but I was trying to just like don't mention any names because I'm doing a stream for race, and I've got, if I'm going to mention <laughs> no much tech now right now, then it's, it's a bit yeah. awkward, you know. So it's totally okay. So <laughs> And, and maybe that'll make them a little bit more aggressive and reach out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Let's hope so. Who knows? So they this, do have uh, a laptop, by the way. They have the Razer Blade. Yeah, I thought that they do have PCs, right? Yes, I think so, do. yeah. I think I saw it on the website as well. Yeah. So this this the part where I'm, I've, I've already selected the sketch, which I really like. And now I'm just cleaning it up and making sure that uh, everything is ba balanced equally. And also, um, not just... Uh, mathematically, but also optically, you know. This part is looking pretty tricky right here. So you created some red and green bands. Are they equidistant, like the red and green stripes, or no? Uh, no. The so the spacing between the white strokes is seventy-five percent of the white strokes. I see. But I actually, um, I don't do it by cal calculating every time. I just, I do it by um, just looking at it and think, see, seeing what looks balanced, and then then just finding a number that is equal to what that just drew from my mind, you know? Yeah. So sometimes the space between the stroke and uh, the next stroke will be one X and next the next time it will be one and a half X. There's not like a magic number for it. I often really like, like these discussions about the golden ratio and stuff like that. And I'm not really a big fan of, of that, to be honest, because I think it's just important to take a step back and just look at your design and see if it's balanced or not. And then based on your sketch, then come up with a number that will work with your Illustrator file. Yeah. There's too much to be made about the whole golden ratio thing. And, and people think that just because you use it, your, your design is going to be magical. And I promise you, if you're a terrible designer, it's not going to do anything for you. Yeah, it's sometimes it works. Things I think it's more like a happy accident when it works than when you really uh, put thought into it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just also sketching some uh, typography to see what kind of um, font I want to design that works well with the symbol because that's the only complaint I had about the font is that I really like it when a, um, a logo has like a, a cool symbol but also a typography that works well with the symbol. Not that you have a symbol designed and you just add a font afterwards and it looks like an afterthought. So yeah. that's why I'm designing something custom to make sure that it works well with the symbol. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know if you guys noticed, he did it really fast, but he took the angle from the the three snakes and he repeated yeah. that. And that's really important in design and in just pulling parts of the icon into the word. You will see it again here. Word mark. So here the, the stroke is the red and the gap, the space is the green, right? Yeah. So the symbol and the topography are reversed. On the symbol, the, um, the strokes are the green part, and on the topography, the strokes are the red part. But even that you did that is kind of interesting because he's kind of, I mean, you're, you're you're saying like I'm really not into this whole golden ratio thing. Too too much fuss is being made of it, but he is intrinsically, it, it, intuitively working this way anyways. He's making sure the proportions are related. It's not arbitrary. Yeah. All right, we caught some heat here. We're at uh, 466 people watching and, and nice. we're from just a couple hundred. So people are really enjoying this, I'm going to assume. So I'm just trying out some variations. This. So this was actually the, the topography that I went with. I'm just trying out some variations and I didn't end up going with this because I didn't really like the angles on the R. Mm -hmm. I think that was a good choice there. Good yeah. to do that. It looked a bit uh, gimmicky, a bit too much. I agree. I just prefer to get something that's a bit more clean because the, the, the symbol itself is already quite busy and already, already quite intricate and detailed. So, I also kind of like where you're exploring a narrower typeface and a more extended. So we're kind of I'm excited to see what you land on. Now, somebody is saying here, Lee Bach is saying, man, his Photoshop sketches are more precise than most Illustrator logos, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't argue that. So this is what I always do at the end when I've picked a sketch that I like, just trying out the different color variations. And I've actually picked the, uh, the green color of the razor logo that was already being used. And I changed it just slightly because I noticed that um, the green color they used wasn't really visible on a white background. So I picked the green color that is both visible on black and on, on white. Mm -hmm. 
someone told you to stop, this is already amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. That's it for our live stream today. We'll see you guys next week. I appreciate Let's it. just end it here. You know what, though? What's really interesting is that sometimes we do something and uh, through objective eyes, we're like, oh, this is so good. And sometimes designers get lost in the design process and they actually make it worse sometimes. So now I'm just stepping into Illustrator and I'm basically repeating most of the steps that I did in Photoshop, but mm -hmm. this time I'm using the grid of Illustrator and using Snap to Grid so that everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. I saw that you scaled it up so it lined up onto that grid, right? Yeah. So you're repeating the same process again, the stroke and the gap. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've talked about this before. The reason I do this is because I, I just prefer to sketch in Photoshop. So I do it basically, I, do, I basically do the same type twice. I mean, some people might be able to do this in Illustrator right away, but my personal preference is just starting in Photoshop and getting the sketch as clean as possible there and then moving to Illustrator. Now, can I assume that that line, the angle is 120 degrees because since it's an equilateral triangle? Yeah. Yeah. And as you can see as well, it's um, the circles that I'm using. Um, like with topography, I wanted them to be optically uh, nice straight line. But when you're actually putting it on the line, then it looks like it's a bit more down. So I used a small, I guess, overshoot as well, like with topography to put it up just slightly a bit more towards the top. Mm -hmm. Now, are your circles e ellipses or are they perfect circles? Uh, they're perfect circles. Right. And I actually then made a mistake so I had to redo this step. Mm. So you're capable of making mistakes, is that what you're saying? I was thinking about editing it out, but I just kept <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, once in a while, I think you should just like have totally some random thing in there so people are like, oh, but yeah, you yeah. can't screw that. Well, I actually had something in this video, but no one noticed. Um, I think at like the third minute or whatever, you could see my food order on the screen. I saw it. I saw a screen. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah, that was my food order. <laughs> but it was so fast, you couldn't see it. So you get your food delivered to your place? Sometimes when I'm lazy, when I'm trying to finish uh, a logo for the future, then uh, sometimes <laughs> I have to be it. <laughs> your, your reward will be you can eat when you're done. Exactly. And I also like to support the local businesses at the moment, you know, because uh, tough times for the restaurants, stuff like that. So maybe yeah. ordering food every now and then is not that bad. I don't know. I think it's great. We got to support each other. And then if that restaurant needs a website or a logo, they need to call you up. Exactly. It's called the circle of life, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <the music. laughs> okay, we're up to 564. It's growing. Can we get to 600 before this thing is over? I don't know. Let's see. It's almost over, so hurry up. Tell your friends. Hurry up, guys. We need another 46 or 47 people to, or 37 people to tune in. All right. I've tried to design logos like this before where it's one symbol and it's rotated and it interlocks in a beautiful way. This is not easy to do. And it's deceptive, like how quickly you move through this. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to challenge, try and do a logo like this, where you have an element and it repeats like two or three times and it interlocks in a way that's kind of really interesting. Not easy. Yeah. So this is just uh, creating, creating the custom font. Mm -hmm. Someone had asked, um, do you always like to draw your own typefaces? Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I just I just love adding something that is based a little bit on the, the symbol itself. I think out of all the logos that I've created, there's only like 10, 15, which have like a default font next to it. Mm -hmm. The rest, I, I just like, I, it's just personal preference. I just like doing it. So it's not, it's not like I will always let a client pay extra for it. I just I just really like doing it. So sometimes I let clients pay ex extra for it, but not always. Awards is saying, I'll call my mom. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, you're doing everything you can to help us hit 600. I love that. It's a family affair, guys. So you're even drawing the TM? 
Yeah, it's, it's based on the A, mm -hmm. and the D is based uh, loosely on the E. So just wanted to keep it consistent. And in the end, I um, I noticed that uh, optically the the R, the A, the Z, the E, and R weren't always white. So I ended up making the E and the Z, the C. Is it C in English or Z? Z. But we Z, understand. Yeah. Red. I made them a little bit less white, so I made them a bit more condensed, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very minimal, but I still think it did the job. Do you make your diagonals thicker in the stroke than the horizontal and the vertical stroke? I, I thought about this because I've watched the previous episode. <laughs> but for some reason, I've in, the, in this case, I didn't feel it was needed. Mm. And then in this case, I will always comment on it, but we'll talk about it later. When we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what the heck are you working on now? Uh, the colors. Okay. So you're done with the word mark? Yeah. And as you can see, I have two variations of the R. Uh, one of the R's has the, um, the line that's taken from the symbol, and one is, has a slightly different R. But I ended up going with the one that has the R, um, which is the same angle as the symbol. I just wanted to see if... I wanted uh, if I just wanted to see if I like uh, well it's done. Oops. Okay, I'm j I can quickly open it. Uh, it's also in the slides anyway. So, so this is the before and after. Mm -hmm. So this is the final one on black, on white, and this is what I mean with uh, the angles on the the topography. So the angles here are the same as these angles, mm -hmm. and this is the same angle as this angle. And every, all these angles in between. What about the cutting off of the Z? Is that the same angle? This is the same as the A as well, yeah. Nice. This one as well. Mm -hmm. So these are the colors that I, that I used. I slightly changed the colors that um, that Ray used on their website because I felt that uh, green was a bit too hard visible on uh, white backgrounds. Mm -hmm. This is actually the font they also use on the, their own website. And I quite like the font. What and font I'm is that? I'm using it uh, at a later stage for one of the extra logos. So these are just some of the variations. Uh, so this is the, their, def, their, their own logo is uh, full green, but I quite like it when the symbol is green and the topography next to it is either white or black. Mm -hmm. So this would be like the extra options. And these are some of the Razor brands. They have like um, Set Ventures is a company which, well, the investment company of the Razor, and they have Team Razor. So a lot of esports teams are sponsored by Razor, and they have this Team Razor patches on their shirts. And I also did uh, the logos based on what I created for Razor in the same style for those companies. So that would be these. So the author is saying this is just amazing, really inspiring, and educational. Thank you for saying that. Uh, Impulse is saying, damn, this guy's good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I tried to say that in the voice in which he is <laughs> to communicate, but I'm just doing a little interpretation here. So instead of using mockups this time, I've um, actually used product photo photography from that website. Mm -hmm. And I took some of their mice, keyboards, stuff like that, and put my new logo on it to see how it would look. So this is before the Team Racer uh, mouse mat. And this mm -hmm. is after. So this is my new logo. Nice. And this is one of their mice. And I I mean, I really like their photography. It looks really sick. Yeah. So this is with the new logo on it. Wait a minute. Is that a glowing mouse pad? Yeah. Some retouching. So they have mice or pads that are glowing? I think they have like a LED strip around it. Oh, okay. That's what that is? Yeah. Hmm. And this is what I think is... For me, it's it's important with like a rebranding. That's the identity is still intact, but yes. it's just refreshed a bit. So you can see the logos changing everywhere. Yes, topography as well. Did you change the? Did you tweak the colors on these uh, products to match your color, or or you left it alone? No, I left it alone. I only, I only swapped out the logos. Okay, okay. But their their branding and their, their official identity always already was quite close quite close to what I created, so hmm. didn't have to edit much. Okay. 
So I just made some before and after shots with my logo and with their logo. That was it. Okay, awesome job, dude. Awesome. Woo! Okay. Amazing. Okay, okay, so I have a lot of things to talk about, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my camera here. I'm going to say, you guys, here's the original on the left and the new revised logo on the right. So let us know in the comments right now if you prefer the original or the revised. And I, I want to critique it a little bit. So now I'm going to go back to me. And I want to, can you pull up uh, wherever you were, an Illustrator file of the finished logo just on a clean yeah. background so I can talk about it a little bit? So a couple of comments here. Philippe is saying, damn, I want to go back to school to learn graphic design. This is amazing um, ad for this field. So Philippe, you either. are in school right now. You are in school. You're learning from us right here. I, what do you I think? didn't go to school either. So. Oh, really? Well, I did, but I quit. Okay, so what did you go to school for? Uh, I did graphic design for two years and then I quit because I already was freelancing a lot and I would rather spend my time on that. Mm -hmm. I started okay. freelancing when I was 14 years old. So. Oh, wow. Dang, so, dang early. That's probably not making Philippe feel that much better. <laughs> okay, let's zoom in. Let's zoom, let's zoom into. I just want to see the the just the two uh, the logo uh, without the Z Ventures or anything. Uh, just I want to focus. Yeah. So let's uh, zoom in as big on as you can. Black one or the white one? Uh, both black and white is fine. I, I, just so I can see it. Okay. So I have some thoughts on this. Okay, do do me a favor when you, when you have a chance to zoom in as much as you can so we can really look at how this feels. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm looking at this, and Martin, this may be just my eye, but uh, I, I see some inconsistencies in the, the stroke width. When I look at the A, the A feels a little skinny to me. And the, the horizontal strokes of the Z feel a little thick relative to the diagonal stroke. And typically what happens is vertical strokes are thicker, horizontal strokes are a little bit thinner, and diagonal strokes are somewhere in between those two things, I think, because optically it looks narrower than it, it really does. So I really like the execution. I think it's a really smart decision on your part to stay with the brand equity in, in the Razor Mark, the three snakes, and simplifying it to being a solid mark. You said to mm -hmm. aid in, in your ability to redraw, but mostly it's like when you shrink this thing down and if it had a stroke and had all this complicated detail in the center, I think you would just lose all of that. Yeah. Having a simple, bold mark like this allows you to reduce it down to a tiny little PyCon. I think that's what it's called, a 16 by 16 pixel thing and scaling it all the way up. I think it's modern. I think it's fresh. I would wear that on a cap. I'd, I'd be, you know, because I'm a bit of a design snob. Sometimes I don't buy products because the logo is so bad. Mm -hmm. It's like the little finishing touch, the end of a sentence, as Sagi Habib would say, and this is the right kind of thing. It leaves it open, too. Uh, I, I can see this being patterns. Yeah, there's so many things that you can do with this. Yeah. Uh, the thing I would uh, ask you to do in, in future iterations of this is just to think about the weights and creating the optical weight in in the letter forms because I feel like they're a little bit off. Like I really see the R. I thought about this so much when, before this episode <laughs> because I've watched the previous episode and I was like, damn, he's right. And I've, I've noticed there's a lot of my own work as well. Like sometimes yeah. for me, it feels optically balanced because I've been staring at it for so many hours, you know, and then when someone else looks at it with a fresh eye, yeah. all of a sudden they notice these mistakes. So I, I, I agree with you. And that's probably one of the first things I would, I would change if I was to, you know, work on this a bit more. Yes, yes. So, and the yeah. way that you can learn this stuff, if you're a self-taught person, open up a professionally designed typeface, type in the word, outline it, and take measurements off of it. And if you don't trust that typeface, try another one and try another one. Yeah. Like, typefaces that have been designed by professionals and they've worked on it for months, uh, sometimes years, they consider all these things and they know because they this is all they do. They design typefaces and it's a, it's an art and a craft in and of itself. So when yeah. you see that, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so... I think maybe that was also me just being a little bit, a bit stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally okay. You're the guy doing this, and I don't want to be a uh, backseat driver, a, a pixel offing art director. That's not who I am. No, no, but you're, you're right, so I, I agree. One of the things that we wanted to do um, moving forward with this logo redesign series is to give each artist more time to present their work and present their process and that we can have 
more meaningful dialogue about the mark itself versus just rushing to the next person. Yeah. I really like this. And I think our, our audience, our fans are liking the format a lot better, seeing famous brands and seeing what you would do with them with the real world constraints versus just getting to do whatever you want. I think it's been really helpful and seeing your process of breaking down the history, telling us a little bit about the mark, about how the, uh, the founder accidentally cut himself with a razor and when they went to file it, they misspelled it. But yeah. that was the best thing they could have done, which is to have a misspelled word because it's unique, it's ownable, it's memorable, and that's really cool. And and for, for people who are in the gaming industry, uh, they're very passionate about their logos and their products. And so I think you've done you've done a really good job here. And we did break 600 for, for Heartbeat. We were at 640 for a second. And then, oh, that's very nice, nice. Yes, I think they feel uh, the end of the show is coming. They're like, we're out, we out. Okay. The, the mom's locked back off. Yeah, mom's gone. Thanks, mom. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Is there anything else that you and I would need to talk about? No, well, well um, if there are any questions about the sketching uh, progress, something like that. I mean, I'm, I, I have Photoshop open. I can show anything live if they want to. Like, for example, if they have questions about how I draw or whatever, I'm open for whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Nishant is saying, by the way, loving the redesigned Famous Logo series, really insightful. Yeah, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, do we live stream every single week? Uh, Alan is asking this, Alan Abraham. We do not live stream every week. Basically, everybody has a very busy schedule. So this is uh, out of the generosity of their, their heart that uh, people like Mart and others who are on our show, they find a time in which they can do this. You can see he spent eight hours just drawing the, the sketching part and then uh, comping and doing all this stuff. It takes a lot of time. So we're hoping that one day, one day really soon, a big company... And come in and sponsor the show and then we can we can share that money with the the creators of this work and hopefully you guys benefit and everybody wins so razor give us a call already right or alienware somebody out there who might benefit from this welcome give us a call we're available apple i know i know you're hard to get so i'm not giving i'm not gonna mention you okay is there anything else here mark do you see anything else in the comments Yes, I found a good question. Just okay. with regards to you creating a custom font, how do you select, um, you know, the co the com companion font that goes along with, you know, some of the copy on their website, for example? Uh, well, in this case, it was already selected because I like the font that they were already using on the website. But uh, in most cases, it's just a battle of trial and error. Just trying trying out a lot of different fonts and seeing what works with it. And I think one of the main rules when you use a secondary font next to your own font is contrast so you don't want it to look too much like what you've created yourself so i think that's important for example if you create like a really condensed custom font then maybe something a bit more white for the secondary font great uh, it's what, I, go ahead mark that's what i that's what i try to keep in mind when i'm when i'm, when I'm doing it so for example if you use uh, if you create a, a serif font yourself then maybe it's not the best choice to also use a secondary serif font mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to read a funny comment from John Solace. He's like, what the hell was I doing at 14? Sad crying face. <laughs> uh, that was good. I don't know what I was doing. I know I wasn't even thinking about my life and my career. I was probably getting into trouble. Well, I wasn't that much thinking about my career either. I, I started fooling around with Photoshop on my father's computer and things just turned into career because I started uploading my work to DeviantArt and sites like that. And mm. all of a sudden, when I was 14 years old, I got contacted by a Canadian company to design an ad for them. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> and they offered me like $400 for like an ad. And I was 14 years old, so I could live with that for like half a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was insane. And then I was like, okay, I wasn't really sure what to choose anyway in terms of studies and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, maybe I should just pick something that's works with what I'm already doing. Yeah, yeah. Just went you, from man. there. So, yeah. Well, well, we're hoping that there's a whole new generation of young creatives who are watching our channel or channels like ours and learning professional design practices. I know that there are a lot of places that you guys can tune in to see people working on logos. And we hope that you find that ours uh, with the people that we invite on are at the next level because we, we want to promote good design practices, best practices, if you will. And that's why I take a, a moment to talk about some of the angles and some of the things that you might feel in your heart, but not be able to articulate. Okay. <clears throat> Zach Norman saying, do you use a dis display style tablet? I know you mentioned Wacom. Is it just a standard Wacom or is it one with the screen built into it? Okay. So this is actually a bit embarrassing. Okay. Uh, I got this one when I was 16 years old. <laughs> 
and it still works. So it's it's almost twelve years old. Oh it's my still, goodness! Yeah, your your tablet is older than some of the people watching our channel. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, and it's actually one of the first things on the top of my list, which I'm going to replace. So I'm planning on getting a Cintiq, like with the screen inside it. Oh, really? But it, this is like still working perfectly. And I haven't had to replace anything but the pens itself because I drop the pens every now and then. So yeah. I have to replace those. But the, the, the tablet itself, I mean, I'm, this almost like sounds like an ad for Wacom, but that quality is really good. It's been working for 12 years almost now and still doing quite well. So. Yes, uh, they're, they're great products uh, when, when they work. I'm just saying when they work. And they, they last a really long time. I, I happen to update quite often. So, look, I think it's about time for us to wrap up the show here. But I do want to mention a couple of things. Uh, first, thank you for doing this, Mark. I think you did an excellent job. We'd love to hear from <clears throat> companies, companies, big brands who, who want to get behind what we're doing. You, you, uh, yeah, <clears throat> Razor. Uh, Dell, um, uh, Alienware, whoever it is that's watching this, and you guys do me a big favor. Everybody that's watching, if you've enjoyed this, drop a comment um, in this episode when it when the live stream is uploaded, and just hashtag Razer. Spell it correctly, incorrectly, R A Z E R, and hopefully somewhere somebody smart from Razer is like, you know, we might not want to change our logo, but we like these guys and we want to support what we're doing, and that's it. Okay, so who have we had on the show today? We've had Mark. Bimans, I believe, and he's at Mart Bimans here on Instagram <laughs> and everywhere else on social media, and he's from the Netherlands. You guys, if you want to check out his work, if you like what he's doing, if you like his process, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to him and hire him. Hire him for a project. We all could use a little extra work right now, and that's it. So thank you, Mart, and, and on behalf of uh, Mark and Jonah, myself, Guys, we're going to get out of here. Jonah, you know what to do. Uh, and you know what to do. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification already, will you? Thanks for being part of our 1 billion mission where we're trying to teach you how to make a living doing what you love. And if you feel so, if you feel so inclined, be part of the donation. See you guys next time. We're out of here. Goodbye.